In this video, we're going to finalize our scene. Really, at this stage of the game, we're pretty much done constructing the set. We're just going to go through and add in any props we might have overlooked. I think doorknob. <laughs> yeah, I think in this case, all we really need to add is a doorknob. Uh, we're going to adjust the pivot of our door so that it hinges from the proper Opens side. properly. Yeah. Uh, we're going to delete out all of our history. Good move. <laughs> <laughs> so we get rid of any uh, excess input nodes we might have lying around. And then finally, we're going to organize our scene into layers so that we can hide any parts we don't necessarily need to see while we're animating. Sounds good. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing I mentioned was we're going to add a doorknob, because right now we don't really have a way for the door to get opened the or shut. The just going to kick the door <laughs> That's right, and it's just going to close on its own, and it'll look really cool. But uh, to add in a doorknob, I'm just going to do this out of three pieces of geometry. It'll be a cylinder with a, a sphere on either end. So let's go ahead and create a simple NURB cylinder. Under its input node, I'll go down and drag the radius down to about 0.1, and let's rotate it on the x-axis about 90 degrees. And we'll call this doorknob with the renaming shaft. What a cool name. And then I'll take my height ratio and I'll set that up to about 5. So it's just a little tiny shaft hiding way back here. Now, if you recall from several lessons ago when we were putting the door together, the door is at a translate Z of negative 6.5. And we can verify that just by selecting it real quick. So there's negative 6.5. So we'll select our doorknob shaft and also set its translate Z to negative 6.5, like so. And then I'll just use my move tool, and we'll just arbitrarily move this to a point that looks like a nice spot for the doorknob. So the, let's see, we have a translate Y value of about 2.2. Let's set this to a nice round number, say 2.5. And then a translate X of negative 1.098. You know, if, if I set that to negative 1, I'll bet nobody, well, okay, maybe not. Maybe a little bit further out. So 1.17. One 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 all right, fine. Negative 1.2 to make buzz. Ha Look at that. Okay. Perfect. That is the perfect location that for a is. doorknob. So if I hit F to frame up on this, you can see it's just you know nicely sticking out of our door on either side. And ooh, it's in the middle of the door, too, which is fine. So now let's go ahead and add a sphere for a doorknob. And I'll call this outer. As there's only one T in outer. I knew that. Outer <laughs> knob, like so. I can spell, really. And, you know, I'm just going to start plugging in uh, values. We know it needs to be at around negative 6.5, so I'll start it there, but I'm sure I'll have to move it forward a bit. And a translate Y value of 2. Woohoo, huge doorknob. Yeah. So, hi, how's it going? So, under my inputs, I'll just grab my radius, and I'll drag this down with my virtual slider again. So, something around point, probably point 0.2 is going to be a little big. Let's set it maybe down to about point 0.1. Oh, come back. There you go. Maybe something about like so. And really, I'll just move this right here in front. Okay, a little bit bigger. Point 0.2. I'm not getting picky, I promise. Come on, mouse sensitivity, you can do it. All right, point 0.2. All right, so now let's go ahead and move this right on top of our doorknob. Now... If you need to go back and check your values as to where you put the, the doorknob, that's fine. Go ahead and do that. So translate Y of 2.5, translate X of negative 1.2. So we can do the same thing here. 2.5, negative 1.2. I'll just erase the 3, 3 at the end, like so. And then if we slide this forward, it'll sit right here at the end of our doorknob shaft. So with that done, all I need is a knob here on the inside. It's kind of big. You want to scale that down just a tad? <sighs> picky, picky. That's cool. Uh, we'll just go ahead and uniformly scale this time so we have a nice smooth motion. Yeah, you guys feel free to make it whatever size you'd like. As long as it doesn't completely overtake your scene. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Giant Death Star doorknob. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit Control-D to duplicate this. I'll rename this one to Inner Knob, like so. And I'll just slide this back to the back side of the doorknob. Very nice. So very quick, very easy. Now, with that, our doorknob is done, but if we were to try to open our door or do anything with our door, you'll notice the doorknob stays behind. So, we're going to parent the doorknob to the door. Let me go into wireframe so that we can see this a little more easily. I'll select all of my doorknob geometry. Then, holding down the shift key, I'll select the door itself, make sure the door is the last thing we have selected, and I'll hit the P key. That means the doorknob itself is now parented to the door, so now anything the door does the doorknob comes along. Very nice. Now, we need the door to be able to open. Right now, if I grab my rotate tool with the E key, there's the hotkey for it, and I try to rotate this in the Y axis, 
The <laughs> door opens in kind of a weird sort of way. Yeah. Nobody's going to make it through that very easily. But since we all know how to adjust pivots, which is using the insert key, insert key we can drag the pivot over in the x-axis to the edge of the door, like so. Press insert again, and now when we rotate in the y-axis, our door is opening up in a nice natural motion. Very good. Boom, boom, boom. All right. So with that, our door is all set up. Everything's looking adjusted. good. Yeah. yeah, everything's looking really good. So let's go ahead and get some history out of the scene. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and clear out our history. A lot of the objects that we've created so far have input nodes. Like, notice the floor still got its little make nerbs plane, and I'm sure if we looked around, we'd find several others sure. hidden throughout the scene. Rather than have to hunt down each and every hidden little input node, what I'm going to do is select the entire scene with a marquee selection, and then I'll simply go to Edit, Delete by Type, History. It's just simply making the scene lighter. We're getting rid of nodes we no longer need. Yeah. And um, which is going to result in a smaller file size. It's going to result in an easier render, mm -hmm. which means your scene is going to render faster. That's right. The bottom line is we are happy with our geometry, the way it looks. Everything's great, so we don't need the history anymore. That's right. Well, you notice there have been several times while I'm modeling where I've been reaching into the input nodes to make changes, you know, things like radius and whatnot. As soon as you know you're not going to be doing that anymore, go ahead and delete your history. It'll yeah. just make your, your scene a lot faster. So now that we've got our history deleted, let's go ahead and set up an organization system so that we can switch on and off different parts of the scene depending on what we're doing. For example, while we're animating the ball, you know, bouncing through and doing his thing, we may not necessarily want to see the curtains or the back wall. To do this, we're going to use layers, like we discussed earlier on in the UI lesson. First off, I'll start by creating a new layer with the Create New Layer button. Very simple. When it comes in, it'll be named Layer 1. We're going to change this so we know what's going to be inside this layer. To do this, I'll double click. And inside the edit layer dialog, I'll change the name to wall underscore and underscore curtains. Yeah, you can't have spaces in the name. No spaces. you got to use underscores. So wall and curtains, that's what this layer is going to hold. Go ahead and click save. Now let's go ahead and put the objects in there. Just naming it that means nothing, because right now I can set this to template, to reference, by clicking on the square here. I can switch visibility on and off, and we see nothing. So what I'll do is I'll select my wall and my curtains with a very cleverly placed marquee selection. I'm going to hold down the right mouse button over the wall and curtains layer and choose Add Selected Objects from the prompt, and there we go. So now I have the ability to switch visibility on and off for the wall and the curtains if I want to. So if I don't want to see them, I can hide them. If I just want a wireframe to see where they're going to be, if I need to just kind of make a mental reference of them, I can hit T. Template so them. Template them. So now, oh, t change that to a T is what I meant to say, but <laughs> that's all good. So now they're templated. They only display as wireframe, and I can't select them. Or I can set them to reference, which means I see them when my view is shaded as shaded objects, but I still cannot select them. So I've just given, a, given myself a lot of power for organizing my scene. Let's go ahead and make one more layer. And uh, I'll go ahead and double click this and rename this to stage props. So stage underscore props, like so. I'll click save. And in this layer, all I'm going to place are my stool and my microphone. So let's go ahead and select these objects. And I'll hit the up arrow key to go ahead and grab their groups, because I put those into groups when I created them. Hold down the right mouse button over the stage props layer and choose Add Selected Objects so that if I want to, I could reference these objects so that while I'm animating, I can't accidentally select them. So really, with that, our scene is pretty well organized. Yeah, let's go ahead and bring visibility back on the wall and curtains, and there we go. We should, uh, or you guys should by this point, have a sphere, which is going to be your character. There he is. A floor. You should have a wall. That has a door cut out into it. Mm -hmm. The door should be well constructed and should now be able to open and close like such. You should have curtains. Mm -hmm. You have uh, curtain control rods that you can use. If you scale along X, you can open and close these. Yep. And, um, yeah, that's you should have a stool and a microphone. Yeah, that's Later about it. set up. History all deleted. And that pretty much puts us at the end 
of this lesson, which That's was right. constructing the stage, and we have a stage. That's right, and the last step, the most important step when finalizing any piece of work, of course, is to save your scene. That's right, control so S. So once you're done, I'm going to hit control S, and now we've saved this. You can even see the little uh, verification result, and then where whatever path you've used is your, uh, your project, and talentedball.mb. That's right. And so with that, that's going to wrap up this lesson on how to construct the set. And uh, let's go ahead and move on into the uh, animation lesson. Let's do it.